The Adventures of Superman, Deep Freeze, Metropolis, Florida, 2010. It was election time again, just really the midterms, but Metropolis was in the midst of a very heated mayoral race between a man by the name of Antoine Anston and another man who is the current mayor, Lauren Garcetti, who was running for re-election. Well, Anston has ties to organized crime, and he has powerful friends that want to see him win. Well, in a laboratory somewhere in Metropolis, two men walk in, one man by the name of Jay Stokes and the other one by the name of Don Cole. Both of them work for nefarious crime boss Larson Lars Vincent, and Vincent happens to be very good friends with Anston. Well, the two men enter the laboratory. They look around. Jay was like, yo, Don, man, check out this place. It looks like the inside of an old TV set. Don was like, yeah, you're right, Jay. It does look like an old TV set inside of here. I wonder what this old periwinkle fellow's working on that the boss is interested in. After Don finished his words, Professor Langston Periwinkle a man probably close to 80 comes out and he sees the two men in there and he says, Oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, you must be with that fellow who wants to hire me for my special invention. Don says, Yes, Professor Periwinkle, we are. And they introduce themselves. My name is Don Cole and this is my friend, Jay Stokes. And we represent Mr. Vincent. Perry Winkle's like, ah, oh, yes, Mr. Vincent, a patron of the sciences. I'm very thankful for his donations. So Don says to Professor Perry Winkle, well, Professor Perry Winkle, what's this invention that you have to show us? Then Professor Perry Winkle responded back, well, Mr. Cole, Mr. Stokes, feast your eyes on this baby here. I call it the super refrigerator. It uses a state-of-the-art cryo solution that I personally invented. It took me 15 years, but I finally perfected it. I call it Cryon X. Jay was like, Cryon X? What kind of refrigerant that is? Professor Periwinkle says, Well, gentlemen, let me demonstrate what Cryon X does. Professor Periwinkle grabs a rubber ball with steel tongs. And he walks over to a small chest. The chest was very high-tech looking. Well, Prairie Winkle lets go of the ball and the tongs for a second. He puts on some protective equipment. Then he grabs the tongs and grabs the rubber ball with the tongs again. He opens the chest up, revealing some sort of boiling liquid inside. Professor Periwinkle says, Gentlemen, let me introduce to you Cryon X. Periwinkle puts the ball inside the boiling chemicals, and then he pulls the ball out again. Afterwards, he closes the chest. The ball looked like it was covered in heavy frost, even had a long icicle sticking down. He then grabs the frozen ball with his super thick protective gloves. Then he slams the ball on the ground and the ball shatters into a million pieces like glass. The two men were surprised, but Jay quickly says to the professor, Gee, Professor Periwinkle, that's just ordinary nitrogen. Periwinkle says, Oh, no, 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 gentlemen. This is not ordinary nitrogen. Cryon X goes down to an even lower temperature and the special property cryon x is once it gets on to an object it's not gonna thaw for nearly a month the two men were in shock like wow a whole month frozen yes professor periwinkle says you could take it out to the deserts and it still will not thaw for a month then professor periwinkle goes over to a metal door in the laboratory. He opens the metal door, revealing an enclosed room full of pipes and nozzles. 
He goes on to explain to the two henchmen, Gentlemen, this is the spray room. You can feel the extreme cold coming from in there. I need to keep the temperatures very, very low so Cryon X can be effective. You just go in here, put in any object you want to be put under a deep freeze, close the door, hit these buttons here, spray the Cryon X onto the object, and it's encased in super ice for a very long time. Well, Don says, I think we've seen enough, Professor. Then he reaches into his coat, pulls out his 9mm, and cocks it. And Don says to Professor Periwinkle, Thank you, Professor Periwinkle. Now we're going to set this room up to be used against Superman. Professor Periwinkle's like, What? Against Superman? What's the meaning of this? Don says, Well, Professor, Mr. Vincent did not give you money for nothing. He wants to use this invention to stop Superman long enough so his friend, Mr. Anston, can win the election. Professor Periwinkle says, No, 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 I did not design this to be used as a weapon. Don says, It's going to be used as a weapon, Professor, so you better help us, or we're going to do something worse than kill you, says Don. Professor Periwinkle says, What, what are you going to do? Jay says, We're going to destroy this entire laboratory, and we're going to destroy every note and every data you have so you will have to start all over again and by the looks of it professor it looks like you're a little too old now to try to start from scratch again professor periwinkle's like you you bastards you bastards i'll only help you on those grounds i i, I hate you all and i hate your friend mr vincent i wish he never gave me that stupid money don lets out a smile along with jay don says jay call the boss Tell him we're ready to proceed with phase one of our plan. So Jay proceeds to call Lars Vincent. Lars Vincent was a middle-aged man with grain temples. He was sitting in his penthouse when his cell phone goes off. He sees the caller ID and it says Jay Stokes. He answers it and he says, yeah, talk to me. Jay says, well, sir, we're ready to proceed with phase one. The old man's cooperating with us. Lars says, excellent, you know what to do. Later on, at the Daily Planet building, it was a very busy day in there as they were covering the heated mayoral race and everybody was running around doing their stuff. Lois was typing away at her computer, so was Clark. Jimmy had just got out of the dark room with a whole handful of photos they had taken. As he was on his way to the chief's office, all of a sudden, several armed men with ski masks come into the newsroom. Everybody panics. One of them screams, Okay, everybody, hands in the air. Don't do anything stupid or we'll shoot. Everybody quit panicking and put their hands in the air. They all ran in the room. They were looking for anyone to take, and they saw Jimmy there in the middle of the aisle. They quickly ran and grabbed Jimmy. They put a gun to his head. And the man that had Jimmy at gunpoint says, If any of you here knows Clark Kent, or if any of you here is Clark Kent, we know you know how to contact Superman. So give Superman this message. If he wants to see this kid here alive again, come to this address, 722 Riverfront Boulevard, alone. And they made off with Jimmy. After everyone left, everyone put their hands down, started talking among themselves, and started looking at Clark. Clark says, I, I gotta go, and he runs out of the newsroom. Lois says, Clark, wait, wait, I want to come. Clark turns around quickly and he says to Lois, no, stay here in case Jimmy calls and he needs to be picked up. They just want Superman, and I'm sure they'll let go of Jimmy soon. Lois is like, okay, fine, Clark, I'll stay. Well, Clark leaves the newsroom and runs down the hall. He makes it to the janitor's closet, where he usually goes to change into his alter ego. In the janitor closet, he changes into his costume and becomes Superman, and climbs out the window and flies off to save Jimmy. Well, he flies to the address where the gunman told him to go. He lands and walks into per Perry Winkle's laboratory. There... Vincent was there, so were his two goons. 
Superman says, All right, Vincent, I should have known it was you. You'll do anything to get your friend Anston elected. Vincent says, You're right, Superman. I'll do anything, even kidnap an innocent bystander. Superman grabs Vincent by his shirt collar and he says, Okay, where is Olsen? Vincent was like, Oh, oh he's, he's in there. He's in that room with the metal door. Superman drops Vincent, walks over to the room and opens the door. He goes in there and he says, Jimmy? Jimmy, are you there? Don quickly runs over to the control panel, flips the switch, and the Cryon X sprays in there heavily on Superman. After the process was over, there was a lot of white steaming smoke coming from that room. Vincent says to his men, quickly, free those two idiots and let's get the hell out of here before Superman comes out. Well, the two men did as they were told. They freed Jimmy and, v and Professor Periwinkle and they ran off. Jimmy quickly runs over to the spray room, but he was repelled by the powerful cold that was coming there it felt like a million needles piercing his skin soon superman emerged from that room he looked like a powdered donut he was completely white his hair his skin his suit it was all covered in cryon x professor periwinkle says oh no oh no they they did it they did it then he pleads his case to superman saying now he was innocent to the whole thing and he did not know that Vincent had ulterior motives. Superman says, it's okay, I'll be fine, I think. Professor Periwinkle says, no, you won't be fine. You won't be able to saw out for an entire month. The two men looked at Professor Periwinkle and said, what? Periwinkle says, yes, this chemical Cryon X is designed to be long lasting. I don't know of any way to rapidly thaw it out. Superman's like, you'll find a way, Professor Periwinkle, you'll find a way. Professor Periwinkle's like, yes, I must find a way. This is my fault I got you into this, and I have to get you out of this. They did this whole thing so they could intimidate voters into voting Aston. With you out the picture, they have free reign in the city to do that. Superman says, dang it. Ooh, and I'm stuck here while they're doing that. Jimmy says, but Superman, can't you still use your power? Superman says, no, Jimmy, I can't. Remember, I don't have sunlight coming to me because of this thing on me, so I can't recharge if I use all my powers. Professor Periwinkle says, well, Superman, I think I have more bad news for you. Right now, it's your powers that are protecting you. See, this thing is going to ice crystal its way into you, and it's right now your protective powers that are protecting you. I'm sure the more powers used to protect you from the ice crystals trying to pierce your cells, it's going to use more of your powers. Eventually, it's going to drain you of power, Superman, then eventually kill you with hypothermia and cell damage. Superman says, oh, that's just wonderful. Professor Periwinkle, get to work on Thaw Me Out. Professor Periwinkle says, right away, Superman, let me just type in some mathematical equations into this computer, and I have some things here we could try to thaw you out with. Superman turns to Jimmy, and he says, Jimmy, go to the Daily Planet. Tell them that I'm in trouble. Tell them what happened. Tell them that you're safe. And tell them that Clark Kent is covering this. Jimmy says, right away, Superman. Meanwhile, back at the Daily Planet, Jimmy gets done explaining the whole ordeal. Lois says, I'll run over there and see how Superman is doing. Jimmy says, don't even try it, Lois. Right now, Superman is so cold that the coldness that's radiating from him hurts if you get close to him. Professor Periwinkle says he's probably a thousand degrees below zero right now. And imagine a thousand degrees below zero just radiating from an individual. I was maybe two feet away from him and I had to back away due to the fact that that cold radiating from Superman was hurting me. Lois is like, oh no, poor Superman. Perry was like, God damn it, that's just great. I won the most important elections today. Superman's out of commission. And I'm sure Vincent has all his goons at every polling place to intimidate voters that vote for Anston. This is just great. Sure enough, 
Perry White's words were right, as Vincent's goons were all in every polling place in Metropolis intimidating voters to vote for Anston now that Superman was out of the way. Meanwhile, back at the laboratory of Professor Periwinkle, they've tried everything to saw out Superman. A high-powered laser, blow torches, you name it, they tried it. Periwinkle says to Superman, Oh, Superman, this is useless. I have nothing here with enough power to break you free of your frosty prison. Superman says, It's okay, Professor. We'll figure out something. We'll figure out something. Superman began hugging himself tightly and moaning in pain. Urgh, urgh. Professor Periwinkle runs over to Superman, but was quickly repelled by the powerful cold radiating from the man of steel and he asks frantically superman what's wrong superman says it's happening professor i'm feeling it i'm starting to feel the cold it's it's this chemical starting to get in it feels like a thousand knives cutting my flesh oh god i don't know how long i can hold professor there has to be something to burn this thing off after superman said that perry winkle's makeshift supercomputer starts beeping Professor Perry Wrinkle runs over to his makeshift supercomputer and looks at the data display. Perry Winkle screams, Eureka! Superman, we're in luck. The computer simulation found something. There is a way to get this thing off of you quickly before it hurts you further. Superman says, okay, Professor, out with it. It's, it's kind of dangerous, said Professor Perry Winkle. Superman says, out with it. Okay, Professor Periwinkle says. The computer says you have to find a blast furnace. It's the only heat source powerful enough to purge the Cryon X from your skin. Superman says to Professor Periwinkle, It sounds dangerous. I don't know how much powers I have left to survive the process, said Superman to Professor Periwinkle. Professor Periwinkle says to Superman, we have to take this risk, because if you don't, then Anson's going to be in office shortly. Superman says to Professor Periwinkle, Professor Periwinkle, get on Google, find out where's the where's any area in Metropolis that has a big enough blast furnace I can walk into. Professor Periwinkle says, okay, Superman, give me a moment. Professor Periwinkle jumps on his computer and punches the information on to Google. <laughs> Professor Periwinkle turns around in his chair and says, Superman, Superman, according to this, by the river, there is a scrapyard that has a huge blast furnace big enough to meet our needs. Superman says, Thank you, Professor. Thank you for all your help. Superman, weak but still with some power left, leaves the laboratory, steps out, and takes off and flies off to the scrapyard. Superman sees the scrapyard dead ahead, but he was too weak to land. So when he landed, he landed on the mountain of scrap metal, making a loud crashing sound. The workers quickly run towards Superman to see the man who just crashed. As Superman gets out, they were quickly repelled, not only by the sight of him being frosty like a frosted flake, but also from the extreme cold that was radiating from him. Superman gets himself composed, and he says, struggling to speak, Ugh, Blast furnace, where is it? All the workers pointed to where the blast furnace was. Superman says, Thank you. Flying took a lot out of him. He was really low on energy. He barely could walk. As he struggled with every last ounce of strength he had left, he was racked with pain. The ice was getting to him. His powers had drained even further from flying. Well, he made his way into the blast furnace, and the extreme heat of the blast furnace, Superman felt the great heat and flames burning away the Cryon X. <laughs> S 
Superman emerged from the blast furnace. There was enough of his powers left to protect them in the process, but he was severely weakened. The workers quickly run around to see Superman as he steps out of the blast furnace. Superman takes two steps forward, then he stands up straight, outstretches his arm, and he absorbs the sunlight of the late afternoon sun. He felt himself being recharged, his powers were returning to full, and the wounds he sustained from that stupid freezing chemical were healing rapidly. As soon as it was done, he jumps in the air and flies off to stop Vincent and his goons from swaying the election towards Anston. Sure enough, Superman, with his super speed, goes to every polling place and beats up Vincent's goons who were intimidating voters to vote for Anston. Superman's actions were quickly assuring the voters that they didn't have to be afraid of goons and mobsters terrorizing them to vote for their cronies. And sure enough, the sight of Superman inspired everybody to vote for Garcetti. It was over. The numbers were in, and Garcetti won by a landslide. As for Anston, he was arrested for voter intimidation along with Vincent and his goons. Soon, they were all in jail, and the Daily Planet's morning headlines read, Anston and Vincent try to free Superman to intimidate voters into voting for Anston. Story by Clark Kent. Like and subscribe. The end.